Uh, okay, so I've, I've got a few things, basic things on the shelf, something on the windowsill, and I've dressed the bed, and um, these are the accessories, far too many of course, which I was going to put on this bit of the shelf. Now, you can't see the nice headboard, though it worked, the safety pin thing worked well, and it's nice and taut and looks, well, it's good enough. Yeah, so the headboard is a lot nicer than the leather. The black leather but you can't see it because of the pillows so um, I was going to try and cover the blind that awful blind in an ideal world I replace it but I can't do that right now so but I don't have time to cover it either uh, and to be honest I don't even know how I was going to cover it or what I meant by that but um, I bought some fabric for it which I realise doesn't actually go that well with the other fabrics, so... Uh, I've forgotten about that. I suppose I could use this fabric now that I've put on the headboard because it, you can't see it on the headboard. Um, I'll think about that later, but as it is, that grey bl blind, um, maybe I'll just camouflage that really revolting plastic pull on there somehow but the blind itself as the grey blind well it may it may possibly tie in with that grey cushion there and, well hopefully no one will notice it so um, I'm just going to talk through some of the well all of the accessories that I've collected for the last month or so so this is a I think a really nice um, braffia lampshade from Ikea the only thing is is um, no way to attach it. I'm not allowed to drill into the ceiling. This wall light, I'm not allowed to touch that either. And so I was just never going to photograph that bit. <laughs> and I was just going to have a sort of fake ceiling light coming down here. By fake I mean um, putting in um, a pretend bulb. So a bulb that's powered through an electric cable which goes to a plug, like these little IKEA lamps do. So they're not wired into mains electricity. So that is in theory possible, but the bulb, the battery powered bulb on a, on a wire, on a flex, um, that I ordered from Amazon hasn't arrived. <clears throat> so I had the idea of actually if I can, modifying this little lamp, which is also designed along the same lines as the IKEA clamp light you just saw, whereby there's a cable running from a bulb to a plug, which just goes into a normal socket. So in theory, with a bit of fiddling, I could do this for this raffia shade, but then I actually thought well, ironically, this little black metal kind of mm, lantern style pendant light would possibly go with the bedroom be a lot better, tie in with the black, whereas this is a bit lost because there's not, not many raffia tones. There's um, that on the cushion here, and there are possibly these little, this trio of um, sort of nesting baskets I was going to use, but. And we, oh, and actually these wooden Christmas decorations. Oh, and this blonde wood antique Russian um, animated little bear and rabbit I bought on eBay. But having said all that, I still think actually the little metal pendant light might work better. So watch this space and you'll see which one I, I ended up with. Um, now, I'll just quickly talk through all these accessories. There are two cushions here because, um, let me just put this pillow back because it's confusing what I'm talking about. Now, these cushions, this um, brightly coloured folk style cushion, this kind of russet browny red velvet cushion, the linen grey and beige stripe, this dark green satin and that bright red um, kind of um, coarse cotton cushion. Those were the cushions I imagined to go with the bedding and they all go really well but it seems that because this folk cushion is so busy it, I feel the bed looks a bit um, 
underwhelming and lost on that side. I'm just wondering whether to put one of these on this side. Um, this one would go okay. It's not very busy or exciting. This one is a lot busier and exciting, but it introduces a whole theme of blues, and I'm not sure the bedroom can handle that much more, any more riotous colour, but maybe it can. And to be honest, I think this one would balance out the craziness of the folk cushion here better than this stripe style Scandi cushion. So I'd probably go with that one, if at all. I might just leave it like that. Now, um, because I'm not allowed to remove this horrible floating shelf, which was made even more horrible because these metal brackets were put up to stabilize it, I'm gonna try and camouflage the shelf as best I can with this absolutely exquisite, um, I think it's just one meter's worth of embroidered antique, well, is it ribbon? I don't know. I got it in the most lovely shop in Goldbourne Road. Uh, the woman who runs the shop has the most gorgeous things there. I would have bought the whole shop if I could. As it is, I could afford very little. But, um, the plan is to put this along the edge of the shelf, so it doesn't look like a modern white shelf. Uh, I'm not sure it'll work very well. It could also be like an old-fashioned bell pull. I don't know, I, even though I didn't know what I was going to use it for at the time, I just had to have it. And I'm going to try and put these little white Ikea three-pronged shaker peg shelves, hook things, under the main shelf. Except that the, the two don't nicely fit in this gap here. So I'm not sure what to do about that. All is I do have this wooden shelf, which, let's see, um, yeah, that fits a tiny bit better, but it's, 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 it's short, as you can see. Anyway, I'll figure out what to do about that. The idea is to have either hanging plants cover, covering these metal br brackets, or some foliage, but this foliage, which was incredibly expensive for what it is, um, but it's got little barely visible fairy lights sort of built into it, is from the White Company, and I was gonna trail that along the top of the shelf, but maybe I'll have to kind of trail it somehow down to cover those metal brackets if I can't fit a plant pot on the shelf for hanging plants or something. Now, although this picture, which was in the room, I thought could stay because it's actually full of Russian art, I don't really like the frame, it's really modern, and, oh sorry, by the way, that little metal box was also already in the room. This is an olive oil dispenser, or oil dispenser from Zara Home. The top broke, um, I bought three of them, and every time the top broke so now I've turned it into a little vase with some red geraniums from the garden and that I didn't buy that for this room either I did buy the pookie lamp and I did buy that very large poster because I thought the black and red would go well with the bedspread fill up this height here and um, but what I was saying is I forgot when I made use of these six little Russian pictures in that modern white frame that I'd already ordered this from eBay, which um, is, I think, um, I, I think it's a print of a scene from one of Pushkin's fairy tales, and obviously that is much lovelier than the modern picture frame, so I'll probably put that there instead and lay them up somehow and maybe not use the modern picture frame at all. Then we've got a candelabra. I might put that on the window, but because windowsill, but I don't really want to draw attention to it. However, I could always just photograph it ending here, if you see what I mean, just have the candelabra there. Or it could go there. Um, I, I, I didn't buy that for this room. I've had it for years. It's a, an Ikea candelabra. Um, 
but I thought the height might work on this shelf because it's it's quite um, difficult getting ornaments and accessories that are tall enough to kind of fill this space very well. Um, then there's just some diaries and <clears throat> notebooks of mine which I thought might work on the shelf. These two um, bud vases, green bud vases, I use as candlestick holders. They're from eBay and they're Art Deco vases and absolutely gorgeous. And they, <clears throat> so they're not for this room, but I thought they may come in handy on the shelf again because they're quite tall. Um, this you might recognize from the hallway decoration video. I think it's Russian or Czech or Hungarian. I'm not quite sure, but it's a sort of, um, it's a wood, wooden dish or maybe papier mache and obviously folk style and would go very well with the Russian sit theme. So I'm borrowing that from the hall for now. I bought this on eBay specifically for this Russian slash Scandi bedroom. And um, this is also made in the similar, I'm not sure if it's wood or papier mache, but it's quite light and soft, a soft material. It's not, it's not ceramic. Um, and I may actually be overdoing the folky element <laughs> because as you'll see there are lots more things that look like this. Then I've got um, a wreath from the White Company. Um, I, th I find the... This is a plastic wreath from Ikea and it looks plastic close up but Oh, there's one of my hairs. When you have long hair, they hairs just get everywhere. But um, I need, you know, I need things to brighten up this, this wall underneath the shelf. So I think I might put that on either this shake up shelf peg or this wooden peg rail. There's, I didn't buy that wreath for this bedroom. Then there's a brown uh, twig like wreath which uh, I also didn't buy for this room, but may come in handy. There are two Christmas baubles I've had for years. Um, they were even in the studio flat I used to live in, and um, I, love, I love them, and I can't remember where I got them from, but because this room definitely has a wintry, Christmassy vibe, I thought they might come in useful. This is a very old um, brass candlestick, and... Um, I thought that might work well on the shelf. This is a, a sort of Christmassy themed fir cone berry decoration. This is a picture I bought from eBay, uh, an, a, an antique picture which is actually a tapestry and that was hanging in the hall uh, that I've sort of borrowed. This was hanging above the... Um, above the dining room table over there where that children's picture that was drawn by my friend's little girl is which you can just kind of see it's also a tapestry um, and kind of folk style then we've got this felt toadstool which I love and I've had for ages then we've got a very intricately patterned and gorgeously coloured Russian trinket box lacquered in a love in this lovely red red sheeny colour inside and black on the outside. Uh, anyway I bought that specifically for this room. I bought these felt robins for this room. I bought these um is that felt? I don't know. Anyway I bought these little kind of tweed birds for this room. Um, I bought this from eBay for this room, this little animated um, bear, Russian bear, playing a drum and a dancing rabbit. This little oil lamp I've had since I was 18. I can't use it, but it's a really cute, delightful little oil lamp. Actually, someone bought it for me. This Russian doll, which has five dolls inside it, I bought for the shelf for our shelf which is going to be so overloaded it might well cave in despite the supports if I put all of this on it from eBay. 
Um, this is a artificial wreath from Ikea that I bought for this room. I also bought these wicker baskets. There are three nesting baskets. Um, thinking they may come in useful on the shelf, but now I've put all my accessories together, I realise I've got actually far too much for this, this shelf. Um, these wooden, I quite like these sort of um, beer, paired back style Christmas decorations are from Ikea. Um, these little houses are also Ikea Christmas decorations and once I had bought them I realised oh, they also come with a little Swedish lady carrying a pie, I think, and a Swedish man who looks actually a lot like Santa Claus, so maybe it's just Santa Claus, or whatever Santa Claus is called in Swedish, a little reindeer. Actually, that's just a deer, isn't it? And the little trees and a sledge. And as I was saying, when I bought them, I realised there's a hole in the back, and I can only think that is for fairy lights. Although, having said that, I think the the, the the china or the sort of ceramic is too thick to let the light through. I bought these little concertina paper figures from Ikea. This is a Christmas card sent to me by someone a couple of years ago, but and I just love the card, so I display that in a few places. It was in the glass cabinet in the living room. And this is, oh, we're onto the final thing. <laughs> this is a book that I bought on Etsy, and because it was wrapped so beautifully and the colours go so well with um, the bedroom, I've left it the way the seller packaged it. But it's actually a rather lovely um, volume of Dr. Zhivago, and now I'm torn between opening it and displaying the hardback Dr. Zhivago, which is, if I can remember, black and red, or leaving it like this. So I'll wait till the end to decide that. Oh my goodness, this is already 19 minutes long. Okay, so, and I'm just talking about the accessories. So I think the best thing to do now is just to cut pretty much to the end. And yeah, fingers crossed it'll all look scrumptious. I just want to also take a moment to admire the little lamp I bought from Pookie. I think every single one of their lamps is quite gorgeous. I fell in love with this tiny green glass lamp. It really is quite tiny and chose this shade to go with it. I, I now kind of wish I'd not gone with a red tinted shade because of course when the light is on it throws a pink light in the room rather than just a neutral um, warm golden light. But I, I love it so much right down to the flex. Trust, trust um, Pookie to have the most lovely flex. Come on camera. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah. Because the cable or flex of a light is actually a big part of it, isn't it? That's why I really like um, th these flexes from Ikea. You know, this, this little detail of the kind of um, black and white zebra kind of pattern. It makes such a difference than having just a plain black or white plastic cable. In any case, uh, this to me was a real extravagance. I'll treasure it forever. Hopefully I'm careful with it and don't break it in some way. I think it's silk, the lampshade. Um, but yeah, this is probably the most extravagant purchase for this room of all. Okay, so at the risk of extending the, the talk about accessories even further, I think my weakness is accessories, and if you look around our flat, you'll see that it's drowning in the things. But basically, I've cast my eye around the flat and seen some other things which may work really well in this room. There's this little cuckoo clock which was in the master bedroom, uh, which might possibly look cute, although of course that's kind of Swiss or German in feel, but it's got a folky vibe. There's this little Ikea tea light with a rotating fox which has a very wintry feel. And to be honest, the more light sources the better because I've learnt through many frustrating attempts to take good photos. Um, photos more than videos for some reason actually. Light seems to work better in videos than photos but a camera is really fussy and if you've got one direct source of light or two bright source of light and not diffuse, subtle, general lighting, a room can look horrible in a photo. So the more little light sources 
I can squeeze in the better. Um, I also thought I might include some of my little people simply because they look quite Christmassy. Like this is a shoemaker, but he looks like one of Santa's elves. And then there's this pixie woman who, well, the red in her outfit is would work perfectly. And she also looks like maybe Mrs. Santa Claus actually. And we've got this other jolly little pixie who has a very Christmassy feel. We've got Wee Willy Winky who I feel also seems very Christmassy. We've got this beautiful little fox that was made for me by a woman, I think in Canada, and it's got a very wintry feel. There's this Ikea plastic, is that a terrarium or a bell jar? I don't know, it's a plastic plant in a plastic pot. <laughs> but um, if I don't manage to make this work with a bit of foliage inside it, this might be a good substitute and also it's taller than this and as I've mentioned I need taller accessories for this shelf. Then we have um, this, actually it's my old laptop cover but because my new laptop is slightly bigger I, I can't use it anymore but because it's so lovely it's leather. But because it's leather it means it only gets nicer looking with age. The colour, the this amazing little bit of mark in here which makes it look like an old book. Anyway, wouldn't that look nice on the shelf? Um, and then I also sort of pilfered some more pictures from around the flat. This is a new purchase, it's a wood cut folk style print. I'm not sure the provenance but I think it's possibly Russian. Um, this painting on glass which was in the hall, you might remember, this is a, um, I think it's tapestry. Um, this was a wall hanging in the hall. This is a very beautiful bit of a Russian painting I got from one of my partner's books. Um, it was like a coffee table book about Russian art that he said I could take some pages out of and I framed this bit. And although it's in a modern frame, um, the colours would go really well in the room and it is Russian and it is a really lovely picture. And then I've got these two um, larger prints I downloaded from um, Etsy. I think the shop is called North Prints and you print the PDF or JPEG files at some considerable expense I should add and I found these two frames in Goldbourne Road. Now this is a very wintry feeling I think possibly Russian Russian feeling picture in a nice rustic wooden frame which would go with our folk vibe you can see I I backed them as best I could after I also I had to this this came with glass but lots of the frames didn't have glass and then I got perspex cut for them anyway that's a separate video and this is also as I said from Goldborn Road the frame and this picture I it's actually my favorite picture out of all of the downloaded prints I purchased from the North Print shop on Etsy. It's a landscape as you can see and to my mind it feels Russian. Now I don't know anything about Russian. I haven't even read any Russian books or literature. Oh actually I have. I've read Dostoevsky. Um, yeah quite a bit of Dostoevsky and I love his work very much but I, I don't know. I know one or two percent about Russia, but I did watch the film Dr. Zhivago and also Fiddler on the Roof, I know that's not essentially Russia, but I have this feeling that this great open expanse and this atmosphere of brooding and, the, and breezes and potency and a great flat, reasonably flat plain. Anyway, to me, and then there's the forest as well, to me it feels really Russian. And uh, Russia and America are the two places I'd really like to visit. And I'd like to visit the cities in Russia, but more than that I'd like to visit the kind of wildernesses um, and, uh, the natural, and, and see the natural beauty of the countryside uh, as it is seen in s glimpses in Dr. Zhivago. In any case, <laughs> I thought this big picture might work on the shelf because it's looking pretty empty with the two that I bought specifically for the room. 